Yeah. You gotta love that moment when you find a random shrine when you're wandering around. Okay, so day three of going to that park. I'm going to scout out some of the areas that I haven't been to before. And I'm really hoping to find a nice like picnic area so that when my friend comes to visit, she and I could go hike out there and have a little pleasant day picnicking, exploring, and then just taking in nature and whatnot. Basking in its glory, I should say. Uh, it's about 4.20 now. Let's see if I can beat 40 minutes. So if you look at those mountains, the little white streaks are the little bit of snow that's left. They're almost gone. There's a lot of green. If you go to the left, those mountains are completely white. That's insane. They're right next to each other. Almost no snow, a ton of snow. Curses. Distracted by ducks again. Crossing the bridge. Dun dun dun. We're making excellent time. <laughs> See you, bye bye. <laughs> I had a really pleasant conversation with those gentlemen at the end of the bridge and I was telling them I was heading up to the park to take pictures and they were giving me tips on where I could go to take good shots so yay insider information crossing 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 Cross. Okay, I thought I would be able to beat it, uh, but apparently not. There's a train coming, and with the distracting ducks and the old men, I was still ahead of schedule. Hopefully the train doesn't slow me down, and I'll be able to still beat my time from yesterday. Okay, this train is so small, it is literally one car. That's insane. I've been in Tokyo where there's like 20 cars for one train, not one. <laughs> so <laughs> that's pretty crazy. <laughs> and thus we begin the ascent of the mini mountain. Dun dun dun! Okay. I may be able to get up this thing faster than I was before. But it doesn't make it any easier. The insanity. Almost there. Just need to take the stairs of death. Here. Okay. Time check. Dun 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 dun. Dun dun dun. dun. And, uh, we started at 4.20, it is now 4.55, which means, what exactly, I can't do math at the moment, what was it, 35 minutes versus 40, so we shaved 5 minutes off the trip, even with the distractions of the ducks, the funny nice old men, and the train, so... Good job. Now, I want to recoup for a moment and then onward through the park. Whew. Okay, the trek up here has officially made me tired enough and hot enough 
that my jacket just had to go off and get stowed in my back because I'm sweating like crazy and uh, I don't need that kind of cumbersome thing weighing me down so chances are probably in like 10 or 15 minutes once I cool down from the initial hike up I'll probably get really cold again so well, when you're hot and you're cold what can you do but layer and layer and layer and I've been finding that happens a lot while I'm in Japan I'm always layering at work I usually have like an undershirt on a button-up shirt a sweater vest or a sweater and then a blazer and sometimes I'm really cold and sometimes I'm very hot and this all happens like within a span of like 15 minutes in the same building so crazy <laughs> so I think everybody around here officially thinks I'm crazy because I've just been talking to a camera and uh, that dog and the old man I just said uh, my whole thing about the hot and the cold temperatures and uh, he walked around the corner with his dog uh, very sweet dog very friendly dog very jumpy dog though uh, uh, that wouldn't fly with me, but I don't know how uh, dog training goes in Japan. Uh, I don't know. I had a Pitbull Boxer mix, and I had a German Shepherd Rottweiler mix. And you can bet your sweet patootie that we took them and got them trained. So jumping on people didn't happen very often. <laughs> but still, a very cute, very sweet dog and a very nice old man. And I have a feeling that since today is the first afternoon of official Golden Week, the park might be busier than it's been for the past couple days. Which might be nice. At least I won't be alone on the trails and I won't have that crazy stalker lady. <laughs> Sumimasen. Sumimasen. はい。はい。はい。ありがとうございます。はい。さよなら。ごめんなさい。はい。さよなら。Yeah, so not even 2 seconds after I finished saying my last sentence. This lady came up and started talking to me, and I probably understood 20% of what she was saying to me. That's, that's another thing I've noticed. The old people are really, really friendly, and they're really nice and talkative, but um, they, they don't simplify their Japanese for you. So you got to plow right on into it and try to figure out what they're saying. And uh, basically, I was able to pick up one. Basically, be careful hiking through the mountains and enjoy yourself, that sort of stuff. But uh, a good chunk of the conversation was a little tricky. D difficult. <laughs> I really need to work on my listening practice. Okay. Going up, 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 up. All the stairs. Okay, so yesterday it was my calves that were hurting. Today, especially with these horrible stairs, it's the knees. And I think if it was just a straight path up, it wouldn't be so bad. But since you have to step over the awkward stairs with their awkward pacing, it makes it a little bit more difficult. <sighs> Downhill. This is much better. Except I may need to come back up when I'm coming back home. Just to double back. But it's a smooth path and not terrible stairs, so that works out. So apparently, as I mentioned, I think two videos ago, there are bears in this area, and a lot of Japanese hikers put bells on their gear when they're walking, so it jingles, 
and it lets the bears know where they are so that they don't wind up startling the bear and then the bear doesn't get like angry and maul them to death. I don't have bells like that. Um, so probably my talking is what's going to alert the bear that I'm coming and that I'm not trying to be stinky. Not stinky, sneaky. Why did I say stinky? I don't know. But I am straight up in the woods. And if this were in any other country, I would think this is where I would go to be murdered. But it's Japan. So that's a very low probability of that happening. Okay, so the path actually started going back up and I think I'm coming up to a clearing and it looks like there's actually stuff up here. So let's figure out what's going on and where I'm actually at. Oh snap, it's like a freaking paved road. What? Where am I? Okay. Dun dun dun. I think I'm supposed to be here. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it. Because I think over here, down there, is where all the deer and stuff are. So, if I take this path, it's just going to be a lot of trees and whatnot. Oh, sorry. So, if I take this path, it's just going to be a lot of trees and whatnot. And then, if I take this path, it'll take me down. But if I hook right here and go around, I might be able to make it over to this lake. I think that's the plan. So, I think it's this path, if I'm reading it right. So, let's go. I also need to work on my map pointing camera skills, apparently, because that was pretty bad. This path is much wider though, and there's buildings up here. So I think the likelihood of being mauled by a bear is significantly less. But who knows? It's really nice that um, you can kind of see it right there. Let me zoom. That a lot of these trees have placards on them. Ah can't get the words to come out clearly. Well, the placards are on them, and then they have the uh, English for what the trees are, and then the Latin, as well as a very long description in Japanese of what it is. Because they can always give more information in Japanese. <laughs> You'll notice that with the signs, especially when you start reading a little bit of the kanji, that they'll might give you like a sentence or two for something in English, and then you start looking at the Japanese, and they've basically written an essay. <laughs> On the topic of English, bad English, um, I like to make daily rounds in my school, as I've mentioned before, and part of what I do is I go in and I, uh, go to the library, and I mentioned this in the last video, and I like to read a book. Today, I went into my school's library, and I noticed a sign that was handmade, and it had really bad English on it, and they misspelled jump, and they called it jamp, or something like that, and I wanted to correct them, but the fact that they were at least trying was like, I'm not going to say anything, because it's not really my place, but, uh, FYI, it could be changed. It could be fixed. I think I just need to teach them how to spell jump and we'll be okay. All right, we are at like a serious fork in the road. There's down that way, and then there is up that way. I'm thinking I'm gonna go up, take a look and see what's up in that clearing, and then maybe just go down if I don't like what's up there. Now I could go up this really steep part, or I could come over here and do more stairs. And I think I'm just going to do the stairs. 
<sighs> oh gosh, these stairs are so uneven. That was like a foot. <sighs> oh. oh, okay. We've hit like a garden. There's a gazebo where you go and have a picnic, I guess. Oh, oh, this was a good idea. Do you want to see why? Boom. So that path that goes down leads down to that. And then if you look to the left, Zoom, 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 zoom. That's where all the trees are that are blossoming. So when I go down, I'm going to be heading towards that area. Doom, doom. But up here, it is quite lovely. You can see like right there, the tip of like a snow-capped mountain. really nice and this is a water fountain that is a fake tree and yes the water in Japan is safe to drink from the tap oh oh my okay I want to go down that path more but there's a very interesting looking building over here that caught my eye I think it might just be somebody's house Oh, yeah, I think it's just someone's house. Nice, though. Oh, and better view of the flowers. Let's go down. Beginning the descent. Oh, my God. Oh. I mean, look at this. That's a huge difference for a step. Yeah, that gap was bigger than some children. <laughs> they even have benches for people to take a rest on. That's nice. Okay, and we're officially down. This is a Japanese stop sign. It says Tomare. You stop. You do not yield at this sign. I have American friends that get confused and they've gone right through them thinking that this is a yield sign. All right, we are officially down. Over there are flowers, the ones that I pointed to before. And then here is a road. Now I just need to find out how to get a cross over to where the flowers are. It looks like a painting. It's beautiful. It looks like there's a path on that side. So we're going to hook around to the right and see if we can get over that way. And um... The water is very murky, but I saw some really big bubbles coming up from underneath of it. So I'm assuming there are some big fishies in there. Okay, so apparently there are stairs right here that lead straight into the lake. Do they let people go like swimming in here? Or maybe like if you had waders on, you could walk out there and go fishing or something? I don't know. Maybe this is like a, a 
Well, it's not exactly flat up here, so I was going to say maybe it's a boat launch area, but I don't see that here. Interesting. Okay, we are down here by the lake. I was right. And we're at that circle. And I want to, instead of following this path, I want to figure out how to get along this path and hook around, maybe cross this bridge. And I think right here is where those flowers are in the center. So we could try to get there. And down here doo -doo -doo, is that amphitheater I was talking about before. I don't know if they have anything going on right now, but uh, maybe I'll actually be able to get there today on my way out of the park. So let's carry on. Oh, bear warning. The good news about these parks is that they all have bathrooms all over the place. Yes, they are squatty potties, but you know, it does make a difference. I mean, I grew up in West Virginia and we had horses and we would be out in the fields and there would be no bathroom. So we just have to go where we were, find a little piece of tree somewhere and just duck away. Speaking of ducks, tonight on Duck Watch. Quack, quack. Okay, you can see here and here they had to cut down some trees and here there are a bunch of trees that have fallen over and up there is a path but um, it doesn't look like they've actually cleaned this one up yet so I don't think I will be taking that one just for the sake of safety but this one is nice and paved and that's always good and I'm not the only crazy person out here taking pictures. I've seen like two or three people just wandering around taking photographs. I think we're like part of some secret club of people who just come up here to take pictures, I guess. We should get like membership jackets. That would be really nice. Once again, it's beautiful. And the reflection, the reflection is what gets me. That's like amazing and these trees look at it it just keeps going and 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 going yeah Sweet, I think I did this right. I see a bridge. I think we did this right. We have circled the lake. And there are more stairs going in a mystery direction up that way. Huh. Oh well. 
First things first, my prize. All the pretty flowers and trees. and out into this little peninsula of amazingness. More unbelievably steep stairs. Look at this. Crazy. Look, it's a person. I'm not alone out here. <laughs> I keep going up. Okay, so I climbed one mountain and went down it to get to that little lake. I think I'm climbing a second mountain. Whew, crazy. Why do I keep doing these crazy things? Okay, so the top of this mountain is seriously just a big picnic area. Okay, so you remember that map I showed you before, right? That had like all the deer and all that other stuff, the observatory tower and stuff. If not, I'll probably try to find a picture of it and spread it on top of here. Okay, that is all off to here, okay? This is way over here, okay? I'm here. Look at all of this. There is no way I could get all this done in one day. Maybe, maybe if I left at like six in the morning one day and just spent the entire day hiking. But dang, they even have a golf course, okay? This park is probably one of the largest parks I've ever seen in my life. That's insane. And it goes all the way down through here. <sighs> Crazy. And then if you follow the yellow path, which goes up through here, through here, and then this is where we were just were at the uh, lake. Follow that, and then you go all the way up here, and then back, and then down, and then oh. I guess you come over here and you go down and cross over, but whoa. I would like to walk it all, but uh, dang, that's a lot of nature. Path, cliff, path, cliff. Yeah, I think we are currently walking on like a ridge or a spine 
of the mountain right now. Okay, conclusion reached. I I'll have to come back and walk more later. That's kind of been the progressing theme, hasn't it? Um, it's, oh, hold on, almost six o'clock and it took me two hours just to get out here and I need to get into town. So I should probably get a move on. <laughs> Somebody done left their shorts here. There's nobody around. So either they had another pair of shorts, they forgot these shorts, or there's somebody running around without any pants on. Hmm. If I'm going to keep doing these hikes, I'm going to need to invest in some better shoes. Because these sneakers, while they are comfortable, they are not meant for going up and down mountains. Unfortunately. The good news is, is that I was concerned about shoes before I came here. And it turns out that I can fit in a 25 centimeter shoe. Um, I'm a size nine in America. I don't know what that is around the world, but uh, that means I can fit into men's shoes here in Japan. And men's shoes are pretty nice here pretty stylish so I have no complaints I can find things that fit me relatively easily I don't need to go to a specialty store or anything like that so good I just have to wait until the end of this month when I get my first paycheck and then I can actually go and get a pair of shoes there are a couple things that I actually have been holding off on buying until I got my uh, paycheck so a new pair of shoes would be nice Okay, so there's camping here, and there are people rocking out to Utada Hikari, and uh, it's it's pretty amazing. Um, but uh, I'm gonna stop recording because I don't want to get in trouble for copyright infringement. But right before I do that, and I can kind of keep the mic covered so you can't pick up on that. All right, so let's do this map thing appropriately. Just a reminder. Okay, so here's where we start in the park big observation tower of amazingness. Okay, we walk through here. This is the horrible bridge of death. And then we went into this open area up on the top of this mountain. And then we came down this little path here. And we hooked over to here. Here's this little area where we walked down. And we got to here. This is that house that we were talking about that was up on the hill. And then I kind of doubled back and went down, and then we hooked around through here, crossed this bridge, walked up to about here, and then that's where we had that big, humongous additional uh, park that was added to this, and it carries on over here, right? So this is where the second part of the half of the park is, where the golf course and stuff are, and that red and yellow path that was there before, and it just goes on that way. So all in all, let me take a step back. This, this is the whole park. It's enormous. But we are right here. I'm going to follow this path down here to where this amphitheater is and then head off into town. So, ikimashou, let's go. And if you're wondering what this park is called, it is just Akiha Park. So if you're ever in the Niigata area and you want to check out an amazingly large, huge, beautiful park with lots of hiking, I suggest this is the place to come check it out. Okay, it's a sign that we are officially starting to leave the forest because we are now on a sidewalk. I mean, technically, that, that's all mountain, and that's all mountain, and well, that's just a bamboo forest, but uh, progress, we're getting closer to civilization.
Okay, the sidewalk officially disappeared and we're on a very narrow road again. But as you can see, there are houses, which means we are now on the outskirt of town. Outskirts of town. Oh. I don't know why I decided I was gonna do this walk again today. Maybe it's because I made that little promise to myself that I try to do it as much as I can. And uh, I don't know, my, uh, my schedule is really wonky with my job. And um, I often don't know what classes I'm teaching the next day. So I have to prepare like seven lessons just to be prepared for all classes. And then I just show up and I teach whatever classes they tell me. Uh, for that day and today was the last day before golden week starts so all the kids are really high energy and the last thing they want to do is focus on English they just want to play games and be silly I mean they're kids you can't blame them really but uh, my, f my first class of the day was really really fun it was really great it was probably one of the best classes I've ever had but then my last class of the day I don't know what was happening with the class itself. But the way it works is that I wait in the teacher's room and the teacher's room is not like a teacher's lounge, like in America. It's literally a room filled with desks. And then there's like a long stream of desks in the front of the room. And that's where the vice principal and his entourage sit. And then there's one desk that's for like specialty teachers that are just visiting like me. And I, sit at my desk between classes and I basically just wait until the kids from my class come and pick me up and there's this whole ritual that they go through first they knock on the door and they basically say excuse me shitsureshimasu and then they say what year and what class they're from and their name and then they state their their purpose is there and usually uh, only the sixth grade and maybe some fifth graders can say uh, I'm going to take or can Teresa and say, please come to our class and teach English with us. Um, most of the little ones usually just say something that involves ego no sensei, and ego is Japanese for English, and no sensei, no is a particle that shows possession, and sensei means teacher. So basically, teacher of English. And that's what the little ones wind up calling me. So, um... I'm sitting in the room waiting for the little kids to come and it's second grade. So I'm waiting for the little second graders, so they're like seven or eight years old, to come and say, oh, uh, we're here for Ego no Sensei, basically. And uh, they show up a few minutes late. Oh, here's the entrance to the park. This beautiful stone torii. And it has like a river to the, or a stream to the right and a stream to the left. Gorgeous. Anyway, back to the story. So, the little ones come and they get me, but they're like a couple minutes late. And when they come to pick me up, um, I and the rest, well, the, the staff and myself and, uh, try to encourage the little ones to try to use English to get me because I'm the English teacher. So we'll coach them through saying, uh, please come to our class or something like that. And uh, so after I do my little coaching spiel with the girls, we head to the classroom and I walk in the classroom and there is no HT, no homeroom teacher in the room and I'm an assistant language teacher. I am not supposed to be alone in these classrooms. So that right away sent up warning flags, something's going on. Um, but I continue the lesson as best as I can. And from what I've been able, was able to pick up throughout my lesson was that there's a group of boys in the class and they're having some sort of fight with each other. And the teacher is basically taking them out one by one to try to talk to them and mediate whatever issue that they're having. But 
Here's the kicker. I've never taught this class before. They've never met me before. So I'm trying to do my introduction. And with all this conflict going on, and the fact that the teacher's not there to help me get them on track and show them that this is how English class is supposed to work, they were all over the place. It was so... It was... It wasn't difficult. That's what I'd say. It was more difficult to get the class under control and get through the lesson than normal. And I did accomplish it. And most of the students did have a good time. But it's just a very tiring way to end a class and a day. So I guess maybe we could say walking was a good way to blow off some steam or something like that. But, uh, that, that happens, you know, sometimes there's an issue and, um, these students, their first language is not English, it's Japanese. So a lot of the times I will give instructions in English and the Japanese teacher is there to cover me and explain in Japanese if they can't understand it. Well, my, my Japanese teacher wasn't there. So screw the rules. I use teeny tiny bits of Japanese, not much, just a word here or there, just so that they understand what I'm saying. For example, they didn't understand that English meant ego. So I was saying ego, English, same. That sort of stuff. Um, I had a game that was basically a relay race. And uh, without the teacher there to help explain the rules, I had to use a couple words here or there and... It took a lot longer to do the demonstration than it normally does. But the kids caught on to it eventually, and they got really into it. So, I mean, it, was, it wasn't a bad lesson. I'm not going to say it was a bad lesson. It was just, it took a lot more energy than my lessons normally take. And my, ener my lessons are high energy lessons. We are constantly moving, constantly playing games, constantly on to the next thing. Because... The thing with the kids is, is that they get bored really fast. And once they figure out something, they get through it like lightning, like extremely quickly. So I spend a lot of my time just over preparing for my lessons because the last thing you want to do is finish. And then there's still 10 minutes left in the period and you have nothing, you know, that's happened to a couple of people that I know. And what happens is the Japanese teacher just looks at you like, well, what's next? And that's never happens with me. I always go up until the period is over. And then I always go just a little bit over the period. I keep going until they tell me to stop basically. And, uh, I think, I think that pays off in the end because I never feel underprepared for a class. Um, Sometimes we start an activity and the kids are just starting to catch on to it and then I'll have to stop. But, you know, then I just tell the kids, you know what, you're so into this, we'll work on it some more next time and I'll try to rearrange the lesson so that they can get the next lesson in and continue the activity because I, I want the kids to really enjoy English and if there's something that they're really enjoying and they're really getting into, I don't want to stifle them. And I don't want to stop them by saying, oh, we're out of time. We're never going to visit that subject again. No, I'll, I'll spend a little bit more time on something if that's what they're truly, truly interested in. Because once you have that basic foundation of interest into something, who knows how far you'll take it. Maybe they'll actually continue with it. Maybe they'll actually want to learn the language. <laughs> Konnichiwa. Anyway, and rant, that was just how my day went. Um, they're wonderful little kids though. They're full of energy and they make me very happy. And ooh, I found a shrine. Konnichiwa. <laughs> I did not know this shrine was here.
look at it. It's quite beautiful. And it's surrounded by houses. This is a, that's pretty funny. gotta say, I love the stone Tory, the stone gates in this area. I've seen red Tory before, and I've seen pictures of uh, Fushimi Inari in Kyoto, which have orange Tory, orange Tory, but not these stone ones. This house is like a maze balls. It's a freaking mansion. And in Japan, when you say mansion, mansion is completely different. By mansion, they usually mean that like it's a type of apartment sort of thing. But I'm talking like Western sense mansion. I honestly have no idea where I am right now. And uh, I don't mind. It's a really nice, peaceful, quiet neighborhood. And I'm heading in a general northwest kind of direction. So I'm assuming if I keep heading this way, I'll eventually hit a train line. And I can always just find the, follow the train line home. So simple. Okay, we're starting to run into a bunch of cars. And I have seen my first stoplight. Which means... We're probably on some sort of main road somewhere, and I'm pretty sure, if I think about it, that might be the road that I took when I walked all the way to the Botanical Gardens. Which means if I hook a right up here, I might be able to start heading home. Or, at least town. The destination is town, and then I can get home from town. <laughs> yeah, this looks like it's a main road of some kind. Yeah. Oh, snap. That's somebody's house. I thought it was a shrine for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the road that I took. Because it was scary narrow. I remember this. Yeah. Remember a month ago? That video I released where I was whining because the roads were so narrow and scary, that's because I was walking along this road and I thought I was going to die. <laughs> well, at least Japan has Porsche 911s. This is a really old one too. Yeah, 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 because I walked along this path. All right, I know exactly where I am. So a lot of my initial wanderings are basically me building a mental map of where things are and how to get there and different routes I can take. And there's so many like little nooks and crannies and stuff in Japan that you can easily miss them if you're driving. So the best way to find this sort of stuff is to find it on foot. And then when you drive later, it's easier, especially considering sometimes your GPS doesn't work. Sometimes the place doesn't have an address. There are no street signs. So you kind of have to build up like mental landmarks and things like that just to make stuff work. And I think right now I'm being, oh, that was very close. Uh, a bit more, I'm being a bit more 
active in building up that map so that I know where things are and I know how to get around relatively easily. I think this is some sort of convention center. I did not know this was here. Okay, so here's another reason why I need to learn kanji. Ignore all the kanji in the red. Look at the kanji in the blue. That kanji on top, uh, let's see, ch -ch 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 that one right there, that's hana, that's flower. This kanji here is water, that's mizu. So I don't know if this means hana mizu? Uh, Mizu can also be pronounced as Sui. Is it Hana Sui? And what are they talking about? Is it a, a lily? A, a water flower? I, I don't know. I don't know what they're talking about. And, you know, you can only be clueless for so long, you know? Oh, snap! I just found another shrine! I am on a roll today. This one's a lot smaller than the last one though. Okay, I think I have just stumbled across a Japanese cemetery. I don't want to be like stepping on anybody's grave or nothing, but uh... Yeah, it's enormous, look at it. You can see here that they put these flowers out. A very uh, typical thing, I've been told. Oh, and this one, they put a beer out as an offering. Um, a typical thing is, is that Japanese people will come and visit, uh, graves on the anniversaries of people's deaths. Uh, at least this is what I'm told. And, um, they clean up the, the, uh, gravestone and they'll put out flowers and leave offerings of like drinks and foods and things like that. Kind of interesting. There's a little cafe there with lots of baked goods. And, ah, that's that mini mall that I was telling you about before. We are officially in town. And, uh, okay, I know exactly where I am. Do you remember that, uh, that festival that I posted the video for? not too long ago, the Matsuri. This is the shrine, I think, for that Matsuri, except this is just the back end of it. So the back end of it is the cemetery, and then over that wall and through the building is where the front entrance is to it. So this thing is enormous. Somebody left their toy here. I kind of don't want to leave it on the ground, but I don't want to take it in case they come back for it. So I think I'm just going to set it right here by the entrance of this restaurant, just in case the owners come back for it. Okay, we've officially hit train line. Now it's easy to get home. Shinkansen. All right, so this is an izakaya, and I think I just found a food alley. Bar and spoon. Looks like an izakaya. Another izakaya. I think this is just an alley of Izakayas. Oh. But 
that's not really a bad thing, you know. Izakaya is nice. You can get lots of cheap foods there. But, uh, I don't know. I'm not feeling just eating chicken on a stick at the moment. Yeah, there's a bar. I'm guessing that that is just the bar scene there. Let's see. Okay, this is how crazy Japan is about ramen. That is a ramen shop there. Next to it is a ramen shop. And then right there, that is also a ramen shop. Three ramen shops all right next to each other. Cray cray. It's a lot of noodles, man. A lot of noodles. My legs are so sore, it's ridiculous. I still have about a 40 minute walk home. I gotta keep telling myself it's good for me. Walking is good for me. <laughs> Dinner time. <sighs> Okay, tonight's dinner is basically uh, beef stir fry. So it's some beef, uh, lots and lots of cabbage and onions and stuff like that. And then rice. This is actually my safety because I got something that was a little bit scary. And this is this, which is essentially clams like clams and minced up veggies. So I didn't know if this would taste good or not. So I got that just to be on the safe side. And then for my drink, fruits and tea. That's so uh, we'll see how this goes. I don't know. It's after eight o'clock. So we're pushing about four, almost five hours of me wandering around and walking. Uh, and this is actually the first time I've ha been able to sit down in about five hours. So I'm kind of like at the moment and my legs feel like jello because I climbed two mountains apparently. And uh, I think I think today was good, but uh, I'm gonna sit here. I'm gonna eat my meal. Uh, probably watch a little bit of YouTube videos, maybe start picking up a little bit. My friend comes tomorrow afternoon. And uh, I have to go through and I mean, my apartment's small and it's not that messy. It won't take long to actually clean up. But, you know, you have to do that whole final once over before people show up, you know, like scrub the bathtub and make sure the toilets are clean, that kind of stuff. So I'll probably be doing that. And uh, I don't have work tomorrow, so I can I can sleep in, which for me, sleeping in has been sleeping until about 7 a.m. lately. I know that's that's kind of sad. But uh, I have my alarm set during the week for 6 a.m. And I've been waking up around 5.20 in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning. Which drives me absolutely insane because I am not getting enough sleep. But uh, I'm going to try to sleep for as long as I can tomorrow. And then go through and finish up cleaning before my friend gets here. And then we're probably going to wind up doing more hiking or walking and more exercising and exploring. Because that's all I seem to do nowadays. Which... I actually don't mind, but uh, it's 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 a lot. You think I would be losing weight doing all this exercising? I'm eating a lot healthier. I'm I'm moving around a lot more, but uh, not really doing anything. The inches aren't happening or coming off. I mean, it's only been a month, but still, I don't know. We'll keep it up. See ya.